On this night, we come together to remember that the last night before Jesus gave himself up for us, he gathered with his friends. As we read scriptures tonight, pray, and gather at the table, we are reminded that this, like, that this night, like this night so long ago, Jesus wants to be here with us. The table is set. The feast will soon begin. Welcome to our Holy Thursday celebration. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this night. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather in your name and to remember what Jesus did for us. We ask that tonight that you would help us to find meaning as we gather around the table. We thank you for the gift of Jesus and we pray these things in his name. Amen. This evening we're going to be sharing in communion. This is a first. Uh, we've been um, authorized, uh, given permission to do this uh, via live stream, and so um, this is uh, an opportunity that we have to gather as God's family uh, when we wouldn't otherwise have opportunity to do that and to share uh, the meal that Jesus um, shared with us. And so tonight, as we prepare to come to the table, I invite you to spend just a few moments of quiet meditation uh, and prayer, reflecting, preparing your hearts to come to the table, to confess your sin, and to ask God's Spirit to be present with us. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we come tonight to repent for the times that we have failed to show love, for the missed opportunities as well as the times we have done harm. We confess to you and to one another that we have sinned and fallen short. Accept us and forgive us, we pray. Amen. Tonight, as we prepare to come to the table, I want to share a couple of scriptures with you. Uh, the first one is from Exodus, it's chapter 12, verses 1 through 13. This is the story of um, the Passover. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, you shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of, the, of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorsteps and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the passer of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. May God add understanding to our hearing tonight of his word. going to uh, share a hymn uh, with you. This is um, a favorite of many of yours, and it's certainly an appropriate hymn for tonight. It is In the Garden, um, and this is by uh, Pastor Sue Ah, and uh, it's been shared with us on our conference website uh, for use tonight. And so you'll hear uh, In the Garden sung as you know it and as you have sung it, but you'll also hear it sung in Korean. 
And that's a reminder that as we share together uh, tonight, we gather with brothers and sisters around the world um, to share this holy meal. And as we remember Christians who are struggling around the world with uh, the coronavirus and uh, the things that our world is dealing with, may hearing the words of uh, another language draw us closer to each other and to the Lord. The next scripture reading tonight is from Luke chapter 22, verses 7 through 23. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparation for it? Listen, he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters. And say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? 
We will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table, and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me. And his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tonight I want you to just take a few moments to imagine yourselves at that table. Uh, picture in your mind, if you will, had we been able to gather together, you would have seen um, us portray what that meal would have looked like, and we're hoping to be able to do that again, uh, or not do it again, but do it next year uh, for you um, when all this uh, all this new normal uh, goes away. But tonight I want you to just try to imagine being there at that table. And you've heard the story tonight of, of the Passover, of what happened uh, as the people of Israel were still enslaved in Egypt and they were being set free. They were um, going to be uh, sounded, driven out of Egypt by Pharaoh because of the plague of uh, the firstborn son um, dying. And if they took the blood of the lamb and placed it on the doorpost, the lentils of the door, then uh, the angel of death would pass over them. And so what Jesus was celebrating was a, a, a part of a long, rich tradition of um, of, of Israel and they were to remember that night to remember what God did for them setting them free from Egypt and now here you are gathered, gathered with your friend Jesus has called you together to celebrate this meal and to remember what God had done uh, so many years ago in Egypt and then Jesus says now I'm going to tell you something new I'm going to change everything that you thought you understood about the Passover and from now on it's, it's not going to be that it's about remembering this night remembering that I am that Passover lamb that will be offered for your sin. Imagine what it would be like to, to have Jesus gather you together and then change everything about what you thought you knew. Think about what that must have been like. Some of the words that Jesus said were that this is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So how tonight do you understand that new covenant? What is this new promise that, that God is making to us? The last thing that I want us to think about tonight as we prepare to come to the table is that Jesus tells us, tells us to do this in remembrance of me. Why is it important for us to remember? Why does Jesus need to tell us to remember? I think if we look at the people of Israel, they uh, very quickly would forget what God had done. You see that as you read through the Hebrew Scriptures. Time and time again, uh, the people of Israel would wander away and, and forget that God was the one who had saved them, that had brought them out of Egypt and offered them uh, to be a, a people in a land flowing with milk and honey and the way that he blessed them. And so they would go for a while and they would forget and they would turn to other idols and, and then God would remind them uh, that they needed to come back. And so they needed to be reminded constantly of what it was that God had done. 
And I don't think that we're all that different. We tend to forget what Jesus does for us. We go along for a while and, and we're grateful for all that, that Jesus has done. And then we just kind of go our own way and we need to be reminded. And, you know, I was thinking tonight that if, um, you know, it's kind of sad that we need to be reminded. But even Jesus' friends, uh, Peter, um, needed to be reminded. If you um, read just a few few chapters, or a few verses rather, uh, after what I read tonight in Luke, you hear Jesus tell him that, um, that after he promises that he'll follow Jesus to his death, that he would, before the rooster crowed three times, that he would deny uh, Jesus three times. And Peter said, no, I'll never do that. I won't do that. Lord, I'm going to follow you till the end, and I'm going to be faithful, and I'm not going to do that. And as Jesus was arrested and Peter was with some people at the, around the fire, warming himself, watching from a distance. Three times people said to, to Peter, I, you look familiar. I think you were with him. That, that wasn't me, but you must be mistaken. That was somebody else. That wasn't me. He did that three times. And then, and then the rooster crowed. And Peter remembered. He had to be reminded that soon after what Jesus had said to him. And so tonight, as we gather around this table, and as you share with your families, I invite you to remember. Remember all that God has done. Remember the gift of Jesus, offering his life for us. Thanks be to God for his great gift. Amen. So tonight, I hope that you have your, your, your bread and your juice or water or whatever it is that you have gathered. Um, together in front of you, and uh, we're going to share in the great Thanksgiving, and I'll invite you to uh, share the responses. I think most of you know the responses, and so um, I hope that you'll uh, join with me as we do this. Um, but when we get to the part, uh, and you can watch me, but when we get to the part where we ask the Holy Spirit to be poured out on the gifts of, of bread and cup, what I'd like you to do is just uh, take your hands and just hold them out over top of uh, the juice and the bread that you have gathered there as we pray. So let us pray together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give our thanks and praise. On the night we come, on this night, oh God, we come to remember that just as Jesus' followers did so long ago, that you were a God of salvation. We come to be reminded that our God is a God of protection, that our God is faithful, that God, you will make a way, even when it seems impossible. And so with all your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On this night, we come to remember that night that Jesus would offer himself as the Passover lamb, that a new covenant was formed, a promise of love that even death could not steal away. On that night, Jesus gathered together family and friends for one last meal before he humbly gave himself over to suffer and die. On that night, Jesus would eat a feast with those who would later betray, deny, and abandon him. And instead of malice or anger, he offers them the gift of forgiveness and grace. Taking bread, he gave thanks to God. He broke the bread and gave it to those present, saying, Take and eat this. This is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat this, remember me. At the end of the meal, he took the cup and he gave thanks to God and said, This is my blood shed to ratify God's covenant of grace with you and with many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, remember me. Tonight, we offer our praises and thanksgiving for this gift of love. Tonight, we eat this meal to connect with God, with each other, and so that we may be strengthened to serve the world in the name of Jesus. Tonight we are reminded that this meal is not merely a remembrance and proclaim this as a holy mystery. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, on these gifts of bread and cup. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us so that we that receive them may, may be one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ returns and we join together with him at your heavenly table. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us continue to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because this table at which we gather belongs to the Lord, all of us are invited to come and eat this meal together. Let us share together in the body and blood of Christ. What I'd like you to do is uh, take the bread that you have and just hold it up. This bread that you have is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat in remembrance of him. So now I invite you to share uh, the bread with your family as you gather together. Take, eat, and remember the gift of God. Now I invite you to take the juice or the water that you have prepared. This cup is, Jesus says, the cup of a new promise, a promise of God's love for us poured out for Jesus when he offered his life. Let us give thanks and take and drink. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this night that you've given us to remember. This night that Jesus shared with his friends as he prepared to offer his life for us. And so as we gathered once again, once again around this table, we ask that you would pour your grace into our lives. Forgive us times that we've forgotten what you've done for us and have wandered astray. Help us to always to remember. And then when we gather together around this table, help us to know and experience your love and grace and forgiveness in new ways. We thank you for the gift of Jesus in whose name we pray. Amen. Tonight you have been fed you have been fed with not just bread and juice, but you've been given the gifts of love and grace. Now go and share as you have received to all the world, so that they too may know the love of God and know that God loves each one of us. Amen. <laughs>